Hey metalheads, you like tattoos? Of course you do. If you're in the Louisville, Kentucky area, come on over the bridge to Clarksville, Indiana and get you some ink done at Ageless Art. If ink isn't your thing, they have a piercing studio as well. Visit agelessartclarksville.com to see some frequently asked questions and meet the staff. The shop is open Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8 p.m., Saturdays, 12 to 10 p.m., and Sundays, 12 to 6 p.m., all appointment-only spots. You can set up your appointments by phone at 812-283-1793 or email piercing at gmail.com and someone will get you set up for your first or your next tattoo or piercing. Hey, Metalheads, after going to a Rager, what's your ultimate go-to? Mine is totally pizza. So when Overload is playing or I'm promoting the Metal Forge Live showcases or the big goddamn metal show, I go to Pizza Donisi. Pizza Donisi is gourmet artisan pizza from right here in Louisville, Kentucky. It features things like the pizza of the month, the sandwiches, and also vegetarian and vegan options, which is so totally fucking cool for all, all of it's It's awesome pizza. You definitely want to go. Hey, and also, from time to time, they do cannolis. Oh, so fucking good. You know what they said, man. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Yeah, just like that in Godfather. They're located right next to the Mag Bar at 1396 South 2nd Street. So either stop in or call in at 502-213-0488. They're open till midnight. The witching hour. Heineken? Fuck that shit! Pabst Blue Ribbon! Hey, Metalheads, you all hear me talk about Magbar all the time. It is the home to the Metal Forge Live showcases and is an integral stop in the Ultimate Underground Metal Tour schedule. They obviously feature live music, but the Magbar also has daily specials like Pint and Slice Night on Tuesdays with Pizza Donisi. But they also do Bring Your Own Vinyl on Thursdays with DJ Kent Jackson and Finer Things Sundays located right next to Pizza Donisi at 1398 South 2nd Street open 3pm to 4am 7 days a week get your asses out to the mag bar rock out For 45 years and keeping Louisville weird, Electric Ladyland has been there for all your eccentricities. While they do offer the best smoking supplies out on the market today, there's a whole lot more to check out. From ashtrays and blacklight posters, to records, incense and burners, and items to stock your metaphysical supply. They are open from 10 to 10, 7 days a week. Located at 2325 Bardstown Road in Louisville, Kentucky, and at electricladyland420.com. Roll out. In a broken wasteland, I come to my fire and place your blood and steel. Upon my fire
What's going on, Metalheads? Thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of the Metal Forge. My name is Mark Jackson, and I am your host. How the fuck is everybody doing this week? Oh my god, what an awesome week it is. Because we have Damna from Elven King here in the Metal Forge, and awesome shit, because they are going on tour here with Glyph and Aelstorm in uh, next month. And I know there's a lot of controversy about Aelstorm and everything, but it's totally fucking uh, awesome to talk to uh, uh, Damna from Elven King, and hopefully uh, Glyph will be on here soon as well. Uh, But yeah, totally fucking awesome cat, man. Uh, I I love talking with people all over the world because, you know, you do get some a bit of a culture shock difference, you know, from being in America to talking with people in Italy or the, uh, you know, uh, Israel back last year with uh, Death in Your Yard and, you know, just uh, uh, other places and, and stuff. It's so, so fucking cool to be able to talk to these people and share metal across the fucking globe. And I appreciate everybody who tunes in and listens. And fuck yeah, we're keeping this metal flame alive. We're doing this every week. We're kicking ass. And I appreciate everybody. So, Elven King, 20 fucking, like, 7 years, man. It's not a, not every day, you know, you get to have a fucking legacy band like that on the show. You know, some of these bands that are on, you know, they might be 10 years old but it seems like a fucking a shit ton longer because of COVID and stuff like that. Or some of these bands even formed during COVID or just before. And it's interesting to just to see how bands have grown as the scene has progressed. And I love that. And it's one of my ultimate rewarding uh, aspects of doing this show. And, you know, I hope that you all as listeners get to see that as well. And, you know... That's why I do like to do some reforged episodes and bring back people a couple of years later and and see what's up. So I uh, I am going to have later in the year some uh, reforged episodes from the first and maybe second year guests and see what's up, see where they're at now, what are they doing. Hey, what are, hey man, what's up now? Hey, hey what, are you, what are you up to? You know, shit like that. Because, hey, we, we all got to have people reach out, right? And check in on us. Because we're all fucking people. We all play the game. We all have our own fucking... Uh, hopefully you're your own main character. Because if you're not your own main character, hopefully somebody fucking cool is. Because, you know, you really got to get it done. But, yeah, man. So, uh... Totally digging everything. Uh, if you didn't see the new Ice Owl picture out this week, yeah, totally rad shit. Uh, we are playing with Wizard Death at Black Circle in Indianapolis on March the 1st. Uh, it is the Wizard Death album release, and it's uh, all ages event, so that's totally fucking rad. And we are also playing with Tucker's other band, Throne of Iron and Cursed Blade. Uh, and they, hell yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, then we're playing at Legions of Metal, and uh, over uh, here, it's actually fucking Derby Weekend in Louisville. So I'm going to be glad to be getting away from that fucking mess to go to Chicago to play uh, Legions of Metal at Reggie's on May the 3rd and May the 4th. Fucking hell yeah, man. Fucking uh, the Canadian uh, overtaking and then the Texas overtaking and everything. Fuck, it's going to be an awesome fucking weekend. So many rad fucking people are going to be there. I am absolutely looking forward to it. Uh, Totally cool shit. And uh, totally going to have some ice owl on uh, soon for that as well. Hopefully. (laughs) Um, As things progress, you know, as it is. Uh, because, yeah, we had uh, Jason on a while back, but now that there's a new band, I want to have everybody down to the Metal Forge and have a an Ice Howl takeover uh, of the Metal Forge. We might paint the room blue and white now instead. Not really. That's not going to happen. 
But anyways, yeah, so, um, you know, just fucking take care of each other out there. Uh, be cool with each other. If, you, if you've if you got beef, if somebody has beef with you, talk it the fuck out, you know? I mean, fucking, there's no sense on fucking fighting with anybody because it's all bullshit, uh, you know? And, uh, I mean, yeah, there's fucking shit out there that maybe, you know, you shouldn't be around fucking people. But, like, you know, then don't be around those fucking people, right? Because we're all fucking fighting the same fight. We all have our own fucking shit. And people that are fucking dirtbags and shitheads, well, they'll congregate together, right? And then the fucking metal crowd will be fucking cool with each other. And we will fucking say, see those religious fuckers over there? Fuck them. Nah, not really, whatever. I don't care. But fucking, you know, speaking of religious shit here, we're going to fucking, I'm going to play a cover song from a band today and I don't usually do that but because they're both awesome fucking people and friends of the Metal Forge I think I'm gonna go and play Elven King's most recent release the cover of Venom's Prime Evil yeah.
All right, metalheads. This week we are here with Damna from Elven King. Dude, what is up? It's um, you know busy times, but everything's cool. Thank you so much for having me, having Elven King on your show. Of course, no. Thank you for coming on because this has been awesome. Because here, here we are. We're, we're celebrating twenty-seven years of Elven King this year. That's awesome, man. Like from ninety-seven to now, how has things changed for you? Uh, well, uh, when you you were you were saying twenty seven years, I was about to 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 say no. It's not that much, but uh, it, it is actually. So, it 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 feels like uh, you know uh, it's it's been ten years or even less that we're doing this. So, tw- thinking about the fact that it's it's you know twenty seven years, it's it's uh, what the hell. It's really a lot. So um, I don't know if anything has changed about uh, the way we, we we conceive music. It's um, the whole world has changed around us. I think, uh, of course, we've you know grown up a little bit, or or maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure, <laughs> right. I'm not sure about that. We're not gonna. Uh, we're not gonna say that we've grown up in metal, are we? I mean, have exactly, we? Exactly. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, it, it, you know, metal keeps us young, so probably it's better if we, you know, do not grow up after all. But, yeah, uh, I, uh, I think that the the way we conceive music and we think about um, how we write and play music hasn't changed a lot, actually. Um, as I said, things have changed a lot around us, so we had to uh, adapt a little bit when it comes to just do the things that are meant to um, you know have our music uh, be distributed and so on you know with all the digital things and right and this and that so but but after all I think that you know we're a bit older but uh, we still love what we do there's a uh, big passion still so that's why we we keep on doing it that's the the reason the main reason behind elvin king and and behind our commitment in, in the band for sure now as we're looking here uh through metal archives i, sh- I see that you all have 11 full length albums with some singles and and other stuff thrown in there through the mix you know like you had the prime evil single that just came out here here last yeah. year and the and the last full length which is reader of the runes rapture when you all get together this big this late in the game i guess you could say 27 years later when you all go to write an album i mean what what's the process now uh well uh yeah, probably that's one of the things that that really changed in the band because in the very early years we we had all the time to meet up uh, in a rehearsal room, and uh, which actually was in my basement in the, my parents' house basement. We had the rehearsal room there, and we we met up like you know, uh, I wouldn't say every day, but. It was like a couple of days during the week and then, you know, like five or six hours in the Saturdays, you know. So uh, we met up and we wrote music all together. That that was the way we, we did things, you know, we did songwrite back in the day. But yeah, now things have changed also because, you know, some of the members have changed and uh, we all have our jobs and our daily jobs. So we don't have all that time to, you know, just be... Uh, in the rehearsal room and stick together. So we have to find, we had to find another way. And basically, it's uh, me and Aiden, the guitar player, who are meeting uh, during maybe the nights or you know after after our job uh, has finished, we we just meet up at his place or my place and we just write music. So uh, conceptually, it's not that um, different, but it's not. Um, I think we do like uh, as a band, as a whole band. Uh, nowadays, it's the you know the, the 
the two of us we write the music and then we record uh, like really rough reproductions and we send them to the other guys and they think about their arrangements then but uh yeah that's the way we mainly write music nowadays for sure and with it being just you two as pretty much he being the original guitar player and you being there pretty much from the beginning uh it you did leave uh for a moment but not long maybe a, a couple of years but you've pretty much been around the whole time and yeah. uh with with that decision why why did you all keep the elven king name and not just do something different when when it was that what what made you all want to stick with it, uh saying we sh we should continue doing this project well um basically because i think that the spirit of what we do together is elven king uh is what we started back in 1997, 1998, and the spirit is still that. Um, there has been a moment, uh, uh, it was uh, before we started writing the Pagan Manifesto album, uh, when me and Aiden just met and uh, we really discussed about, you know, closing this band, because I think that after the ERA album, we were in a bit of a, in a moment when we um, still had to um, define once and for all the Elven King sound. And there we said, if we are able to finally define it and make an album that really captures the essence of Elven King once and for all, then we're going to stick to this, you know, stick together, stick to the Elven King name and go on from there. But if we're not able to do that, maybe it's better if we close this band because there is no sense if we're not able to capture again the spirit that made us start back in, in you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the late 90s. So fortunately, you know, with the, a lot of talking and a lot of, you know, listening to old ideas, old demos, old things that we never, you know, uh, never turn into songs, um, we found, you know, the spirit again, and I think that we defined once and for all the Elven King essence, the Elven King sound, and and that's what you know motivated us in continuing and go on with 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 the band. Absolutely. See, that's rad as shit. Because, like I said, I, I know you're also in an, in another band as well. Uh, Hell in the club, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, totally different thing, but yeah, right, but. So as that goes on, and had when when you come back to either or Elven King or it's just like so you're in that mode to write for that. So with lyrics and vocals, do you how do you wait on riffs or do you have like an idea first and you run it by Ada and say hey this is what I have or or how do you do that? Well, um, I think that most of my songwriting, but also of Aiden's songwriting, uh, comes from ideas that just, you know, arrive. And uh, the first thing we do is we record like an, an audio file on, on the telephone, on the phone, you know, on the iPhone. And uh, like uh, we may be driving or I don't know, whatever we do during the day, this idea, you know, just strikes and we just go there and and hum it on on the phone that's I, I think that that's most of the ideas comes from these strikes I would call them yeah uh, but you know uh, it's like who I yeah them. I get you it's like well who knows where ideas come from Mark they just appear <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. like that. exactly <laughs> but then you know when we meet up me and him uh, we just start from these just really rough idea as and then maybe with the guitars in hand we just go on and we let us go through riffs and things that just comes to our mind when we are inspired by those small hints you know sure so basically yeah so have you ever written any lyrics that you thought would have been for elvin king that ended up going towards your other band instead uh no, I don't think so. Okay, I mean, <laughs> or vice versa. It's, it's, yeah, I know. I mean, it's it's like uh, two com 
completely different parts in my brain. Uh, with Elven King, I know that I am going through, you know, that kind of uh, mood and atmospheres. And and with Elven the Club, I know that it's like uh, tributing uh, the music that made me fall in love with with rock, with heavy metal when I was a kid. So it's a completely different mindset. So I do have a couple of questions from a uh, actually another a member of one of my bands, Jason Roach from Ice Hal. He wanted to know a couple of things because he is a huge Ooh. fan of Elven King, uh, oh, okay. and he is actually wanting to know about your influences and and writing on concept albums. Like how how do you pro- do the process for concept? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I, I, I have to say that we approached this idea of, of, of making uh, a concept album or even a, a concept trilogy, as we are doing right now with the Reader of the Rooms uh, story. Um, uh, we really had, you know, it's, 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 it was an idea that we had since, I don't know, many years ago to, to, to make a, a concept album because uh, we have been... Uh, extreme fans of like King Diamond and his albums and, and the way he was telling stories through, through his albums or other big rock operas like, I don't know, uh, Wasps, the, the Crimson Idol or mm-hmm. um, Savage Streets. These albums that could, um, you know, be so strong musically but still have the, these incredible stories, you know, that were told through the songs and through the atmospheres, you know. So it's always been a, a, a wish for us to, to, to be able to, to, do, to create a concept album, but we've never been, you know, I think we never had the right idea. But with the Reader of the Runes thing, we just uh, just clicked and we, we started. So um, it's been really difficult uh, to come up with this and to develop it into three albums and, 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 and be able to find the right song, the right mood for, you know, every little chapter of the story. It's really been a complicated process and it's been cool. I mean, it's for really sure. been, yeah. So, yeah, those are the main influences when it comes to, to concept albums. Now, a lot of your videos, too, on YouTube, uh, you have great production videos as well uh, that really tell the story of a lot of the songs that you know in the actual videos, not not including just like lyric videos. But yeah, yeah. So obviously, you all put a lot of stock into presentation. Now, when say for this next the upcoming tour. Uh, are you all going to have some pretty cool stage stuff going on? I mean, because you're in a, you're in some pretty cool uh, little theaters coming up, you know, with like the Murat in Indianapolis and, and stuff. You know, I, I've been there a few times. Oh, okay. Cool. Nice, nice to know. Yeah. I'm actually planning been, on going been, to that never. show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, you know, it's um, our idea is always that of, um, I would say um, completing the music that we play with uh, the uh, you know an imagery that can evoke a little bit the the themes and the things we are talking about in the lyrics because I think that with with, with Elven King is uh, you know the main thing is music of course but it's um, I think that it's more complete if there is also a, a, um, uh, some imagery that can really evoke what you know the, the, the atmospheres of our songs and of our lyrics. Sure. So it would be great, yeah, to also be able to do that um, on the tour uh, with with, with Ailstorm. I, I think that it will be more a matter of 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 you know logistics when it comes to travels and, and for sure and, and, and these things that we we are still trying to figure out at the moment. So let's see if we'll be able actually to to bring something with us. Of course, uh, we'll have our you know costumes and our imagery uh, with us, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll be able to do something. Maybe just simple, but uh, hey, yeah. 
Perfection. Anything is anything, in my opinion. Uh, if you do, if you even have just fucking good lights, <laughs> not just yeah, yeah, not yeah, just yeah, lights exactly. in a fucking club somewhere. <laughs> no, even if you have good lights, it makes just a fucking all the difference uh, of a show like yeah. that. And and for sure, True. I'm definitely looking forward to that show as well. And cool. you know, just like even like with the videos, like I was saying, like the comparison is, I could totally see like. You know, having the moment on stage where fucking like the either the nymphs or the succubi come out and fucking dance around you or something, you know, and you're just up yeah, in yeah, fucking yeah. epic metal glory. You know, I get it. that's I get that it. cool yeah, yeah, yeah. shit, you know, like, you know, like, like Maiden, like Maiden with Eddie. I mean, that's the we were all. Yeah, excited when we, you know, we saw Eddie coming. Uh, yeah, twelve stage, foot you know? tall, fucking Eddie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Bruce <laughs> running between his legs. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. mean, I mean and, yeah. and that's actually where I was going with it was the maiden aspect because even with it, whether it's a, uh, animatronics banners for them because they switch banners almost every song uh yeah. or giant inflatables like with acdc <laughs> with yeah. you know or whatever it, it's all cool and it all leads to to something and the imagery is out there and it's great and exactly which also blends into artwork for your albums when the how much care is actually put into making sure everything is exactly the the way you want it. I think we've we've always been really maniacal about uh, cover art, you know? <laughs> yes. really, really. And I I know for sure that uh, you know the artists we work with can absolutely tell you something about this, you know. So through the years we've been really you know maniacal. That's the that's the word. Um, you know, fortunately, with uh, with Sofia Dankova, who's the artist who took care of the last two cover artworks for the Reader of the Runes albums, and will also take care of the new one. She's actually finishing, you know, the last touches of that. So um, it it it's um, we just had to give her um, the story. And what we thought uh, we, you know, what, what we saw in our minds as the cover artwork. And she came with uh, a couple of sketches and they were already perfect. So we really found like a connection with her that um, basically, um, you know, uh, we, it saved her from all our fuss about <laughs> details, you know. Sure. Because she already put all the details in and all the things that we, you know, had in our minds. It, it was amazing. Definitely. So out of your album artwork, uh, which one do you like the least? <laughs> oh. Not that you actually <laughs> hate it, but it's just like it's you wish you could have done it better in hindsight. Uh, that's always difficult. Uh and I know it's like picking your children and, and stuff like exactly. that. It's like pointing exactly. out their flaws. But exactly. I mean, if you were to release something in like a, a deluxe edition, a reissue that you could change the artwork on, what would it be? Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that, that's that's better. Because that's um, what everybody does. I mean, Megadeth. <laughs> yeah. But, well, I, and usually I don't like that kind of operation. I mean, the original artwork is set in stone. Sure. That's it. But, yeah. But um, actually, I think that the least I prefer, not the least I prefer, but the one that had um, a bit of, um, uh, you know, uh, it was difficult coming uh, up with that uh, artwork was uh, Secrets of the Magic Grimoire. We, you know, we love the artist, Samuel Araya, who made uh, a lot of great artworks also for us. But, you know, when we mm, asked him the cover, he came up with a, an amazing piece of artwork, mm -hmm. which uh, was, you know, the record company didn't like very much and told us, hey, guys, mm, maybe if you change it, you do something different. And for the first time, maybe for the first time, we, okay, we said, all right, uh, let's try 
another another artwork, another piece, and we asked Samuel to come up with another one. Uh, but we were really, you know, there was not a lot of time anymore for deadlines and so on. So we gave us something that he already uh, made, you know, pre-made, uh, which was not done specifically for us. It's an amazing artwork. I, I, I still believe it's it's great, but it, it was not done specifically for us, uh, even if it was perfect for the album. Right. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe That's... the best thing would, was you know to stick with the with, with the, the original. original artwork he made. Uh, which we used, by the way, in, in inside the okay. the CD, inside the vinyl. You know, we still used it, but yeah, that was the original idea, and probably that was meant to be, you know, the cover of the album. That's the only thing I can, you know, I can say about uh, are, on the CD. Artwork. On the CD, are you able to turn the book around to make it the cover? I don't. I don't oh. think so. And, there, <laughs> and there's not no, and there's not the logo on it, so it's no. That, no, we should have done it that way. You're yeah, right. there Man. you go. Uh, you know, for that being for that not being designed for the band, it is very much in the same scheme yeah, yeah, as 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 Elvin yeah. King, and I love that. And you know, the the just even the uh, the logo design of of the symbol that's on the mic stand and everything. I've always loved that stuff. Uh, it's almost cool. like an Eddie or a, a Vic Rattlehead or, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. It is like a, it's like, psh, there it is. And when you see that symbol, you know, it's Elvin King. And, and I dig that. Yeah. And, the, and that's, you know, we, we always uh, ask our, our artists to, hide it somewhere in the in, in the artwork so you will always find it in the in the artwork definitely so with uh reader of the runes divination in 2019 and then 2023 for uh rapture and the tour coming up when do you all have in mind are you already writing for the next part yeah, uh, and actually, uh, you know, when we recorded uh, the Rapture one, we um, we already had all the songs also for part three. Okay. And we re yeah, and and when we recorded the drums for part two, we also recorded all the the tracks for part three. So basically, we were really ahead with the, with nice. all the work for part three. And I can say that we will start mixing it like in a week or so so it's the, the, the album's done we just have to you know add the final touches some editing here and there some you know small acoustic parts still to be still to be recorded but it's it's ready basically for sure and, uh, and it will be it really it will be released this year D damn hell yeah so yeah. obviously because part one was released in 2019 you probably had this idea well before this to to do them like year after year after year but because of the pandemic that screwed and fucked everybody up exactly oh, oh yeah exactly oh probably 2019 21 and 23 like every two years sure but this was not possible of course so we took all the time of uh, you know during the pandemic to write all the songs of both albums two and three and then release them one one after the other so that we kind of, you know, stick to the plan and go, yeah, with, with the release of the three albums um, pretty, you know, near so that we don't lose the, the you know, the, the don't lose track of the story. It, it, it's something sure. that was meant to be released, uh, you know, in a, in a short amount of time so that, you know, you get all the whole picture and the whole story. Now, there's a lot of bands out there today one in particular, it's a major band that releases a video for every song, whether it be a lyric video or an actual video, uh, or it might be something where it's an art or artist done licensed video for them. Have you ever considered mm. doing that for the concept albums and the concept trilogy and making it like an actual film base project as well? That would it would be amazing, of course, but uh, I, I don't think we'll ever have the budget for something like that. Uh, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be massive, you know. 
Uh, yeah, it, if you're it, doing 12 yeah, songs an album. Yeah, exactly. We should do, yeah, like three songs in an album. So that, yeah, we can do. <laughs> yeah, right? Be a 90 minute, 90 minute video. Shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, um, when difficult, but it would be great. Would that be would great. be awesome. I didn't know if that was something that you all were trying to work for. It seemed like it was some of the, the, the older videos that I watched. Uh, on YouTube that I've constantly watched on YouTube over the last few years. So uh, when you're writing lyrics, especially in a concept format, do you ever tie lyrics back to previous songs that you've done? Like say, for example, there's a line in a song that you really just like. So you might use some, a similar phrasing and it kind of reminds you of the other song. Well, it's uh, actually we've been using um, many times uh, some references to our past lyrics, um, to maybe some terms or some ideas that they used in the past, and, sure. and, and use them again sure. as a yeah as a, as a reference, as a tribute to ourselves in some way. So it's like having a recurrent uh, set of words or ideas that are kind of uh, you know linking all our history together so yes we've we've been doing that also in this in these new albums that we've we've done if you you know follow elven king since day one you will find some you know like uh, words that i don't know heathen real so that mm -hmm. attributes the first album or things like that yes we we usually do that we like to do that so when you're curating your set for say a tour where you're playing in places like old national theater and you know these uh theater shows uh, i mean i'm assuming you're given about uh, an hour ish i'm just gonna I'm just, yeah. so how do you curate the set from you know 11 full length albums yeah it's 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 difficult you know it's yeah we usually try to give space to the um, to the latest songs, uh, to the you know the songs that maybe our fans appreciated the most and they want to hear uh, live maybe for the first time because you know they've maybe seen us many years ago or they've never seen us uh, before. So we we try to you know give space to the la to the like last songs that we released as singles maybe or that are good live songs that we just wrote but then usually we try to pick uh songs from all albums and give space also to the the classics or songs that you know uh coming up from our first albums and we usually try to mix it up uh from all the uh, from all the, the the career, but it's it's difficult because now you know eleven albums are yeah. When you're looking <laughs> at over a hundred and hundred and thirty songs, probably <laughs> yeah. And if you pick up just one for every album, still you you already have eleven eleven songs. It's like almost you know the whole show done. <laughs> now, when you're doing that, obviously you you're you're more than likely going to play the same set for the for the duration of the tour because that makes the most sense obviously yeah but when when you do you all adjust as you go when you're playing live say you pick up a song and it and, it, and you put it in a third place and it just doesn't fit there it doesn't hit well with the audience it, like yeah yeah so do you all yeah, adjust we do that like all, that yeah yeah we do that all the time uh because we want the uh, the show to be uh, you know, we want people to enjoy the be, show. Yeah. yeah, so you know, sometimes we 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 played songs that are, um, you know, like we enjoy playing. Sure. But then you know the the fans are just like, you know, they just don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it doesn't click. <laughs> so yeah, okay, okay, let's you know, let's do something. And then it feels awful. For. I know that because I've done that yeah. in my in where I play, and I'm just like, this is fucking cool. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they look like exactly. they, they don't like exactly. this song. <laughs> you know, I, I like, like like after after the shows and like discussions, like saying, "Man, that song is so cool!" You know, it's so great to play and it should be enjoyable. But people just you know doesn't you know they, they, yeah. I mean, don't, I totally don't want it. So. Do you do you throw in like the uh, the is there the random show on the tour that's like the cut loose show where everybody just goes crazy and and has the night. 
I, I really hope so, but uh, it's not. Uh, we never planned that. It just happens. <laughs> okay, cool. Because you know, some some people, you know, you got to be the responsible adult sometimes. Where not everybody yeah. can get trashed. Like tonight's my night, tomorrow's your, you know. <laughs> and then there's the one night where we we all get shit faced. So yeah, so well, does, does that you happen? Know, usually it's not the case for us because we we want to be focused when we we are on stage. Sure. And uh, usually the the shit face phase comes later. You know, comes after the show. But it it happened. It happened to be completely out of our minds. You know. Uh, awful moments but it happens hell yeah man all right enough shop talk fuck this mm. you're gonna be in america here soon this is gonna fucking kick ass we're gonna go see it we're gonna do it we're gonna live it fucking up uh through march and april correct correct hell yeah uh so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to derailed because i want to get to you get to know you more as a fucking person so five random questions uh, okay. If you were to write a record outside of either of the two genres that you already play, what would it be? An album, or you may you, you mean a, a genre? Yeah. If you were to write an album outside mm -hmm. of the the music that you currently play, what would what yeah. what genre would you want it to be? It would be black metal. Nice. Oh, totally. Yeah, I'm a big big fan of black metal since you know. Forever, so yeah, it would be black metal. You know, I am admittedly, uh, I mean, I, I'm cool with a lot of black metal. It's not my preferred metal, I guess. And I would love to have more black metal people on the show, more black metal bands and such, just because I want to get more into it. And, you know, okay, cool. uh, there was a dude uh, a couple of years ago, his name, uh, he had a clothing line. It was Vomit 666 Clothing. And he huh? actually wrote like a black metal primer. And oh. I'm, 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 I need to post it on my website uh, just because it's it's actually really, really uh, informative if you want to get into black metal. Cool. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Hell yeah, man. Uh, how have you changed over the last five years? How have I changed? Yeah, how have you? Uh, that's a tough question. Uh, I think that I've become more um, aware of my uh, balance uh, as as a person. Uh more in tune with myself, uh, uh, yeah, more aware of what I can and what I cannot do, uh, what I want and what I don't want in my life. Hell yeah. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I think I've come across that too in the last couple of years. I just recently, uh, well, I'm almost going to be 41, so... Uh, but yeah, I think over the last year, that kind of just was like a, a click moment for me. And I was just like, you know what? Uh, it's okay to say no, you know, and it's okay to fucking sit there and say, this is not cool. I want to do this instead. Or I'm just going to stay fucking home tonight. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, That's you the, don't. Yeah. It's well, like, probably, be, probably it's because we're getting older. I'm like, I'm 42, so. Probably that's that's right. why. That's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Uh, what are your bad habits? Uh, it's, it's this is difficult. My uh, bad habits. Yeah, uh, that's hard to yeah. admit because you know that you know that is hard to admit. I mean, I have to think about it. Do you, uh, do you smoke too much? Drink my... too much? Uh, no, I stopped all that. I mean, uh, yeah, it's like I, I almost don't have any bad habits. Almost, uh, but too uh, much red meat. <laughs> no, I'm I'm a vegetarian. Oh actually, shit! But, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, uh, you know, since I have some health issues, maybe sometimes I tend to you know stress my my body too much, like ah. uh, working a lot, working too much, doing so many things, and maybe I should you know cool down a little bit. Not That's taking probably enough time for yourself. The thing that yeah. I yeah. That I want, you know, mostly want to adjust in my life. Yeah, definitely. See, I totally get that. You know, I don't know how it is uh, how it is there because you're in Italy, correct? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so see, I'm in like the Midwest. I'm in, I'm just above Louisville, Kentucky, just right in Indiana. And mm. uh, for us, you know, in America, you know, it's like fucking most of us are fucking working overtime at our jobs. You mm-hmm. know, some people, you know, you don't have to. Like if you're in an office or something. But like for me, I'm putting in 55 to 60 hours a week at my job. And it's like... Yeah, I totally get not taking enough time for yourself. And then you got to do shows on top of that, promoting, putting out podcasts. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, it's it's very, you know, it's like always on the verge of, I'm always on the verge of a burnout, I think. <laughs> I, I yeah. Think, you know, so I, I yeah, that, that's probably, you know, sometimes I should just, okay, go down. I will do that tomorrow. You know, for everybody listening to this, in the uh, section below where it, where it says, uh, what did you think of this episode on Spotify and shit? Uh, d- is that your all's opinion too? Or are you just on the verge of burnout every day of your life? <laughs> like we are. <laughs> yeah. <exactly>. Holy shit. <laughs> totally. You totally <laughs> hit it right on the head. Just like, just like that. Uh, <laughs> would you rather question uh would you rather have to drink all of your drinks from a baby bottle or eat all of your food from a trash can lid (laughs) the first (laughs) (laughs) from a baby bottle yeah Yeah. definitely i mean why not right yeah at least it's 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 clean sure well yeah (laughs) not (laughs) reusing the same one (laughs) Uh, just pouring new stuff in it. Gross. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, definitely the baby bottle, I would say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's some rapper at one time that carried a baby bottle. I think there was. I, oh, really? I, I vaguely remember this in the early 2000s. Uh, so if anybody's listening, uh, check that out and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> we need to know that. <laughs> yes, we absolutely, positively must know that. Dude, yeah. I have one more question. But before we get to it, as always, links are listed below. So please give a like, a share, and a follow. Go support in any way you can. Definitely, if you're in the U.S., go see them on this upcoming tour. And, dude, do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give to anybody today and anything else you're promoting? What do you want to talk about? Well, uh, as you already said, we are really excited to come to the U.S. It's going to be our very first uh, American tour, uh, tour of America and Canada, actually. And, uh, you know, we've been a couple of times, uh, like a Prague Power Festival. It's been amazing. So we really are looking forward to this. It's been years we, we wanted to do uh, an American tour. So finally, uh, we're going to be there. So just you know check on the internet all the the shows and uh, be there hell yeah and, and y'all are going to uh, be in Cincinnati in Michigan uh, uh, like you said Montreal uh, New Haven Connecticut shit all over the place cool and of course watch out for a new album that's gonna come out this year uh, uh, soon you'll have news about you know a, a new single and and in the meantime, very soon, and that means at the end of this month, we will release a digital single, as we did for the previous uh, Reader of the Rooms Divination, that we released a, a cover song and then a new single, a new digital single that linked the first part to the second. And now, uh, like it's January 26th, we're going to release a song, a standalone song, that will link Rapture to the following chapter to chapter number three so yeah stay tuned for that hell yeah man absolutely we are totally looking forward to it cool. uh dude uh damna david thank you so fucking much for coming in the metal forge this week i have one final question and that is what is the craziest thing you ever did for love <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you so much, Mark, for having me, having us on your show. Uh, oh, man. I don't know. Uh, I have to think a little bit about this. Sure. 
I uh, somewhat picture you with the with the boombox, like John Cusack, and say anything where it's up above his head. <laughs> That's not you, is it? No, no. Um, uh, I don't know. Probably it has to do with with writing writing some lyrics in a song, but are you know secreted, inserted in a, in a mm. song, and you know only one person will understand things like that. Not very, cr not crazy actually, but uh, yeah, something like that. I don't know if I made any, you know, like. Uh, uh, big, you know, big scenes or big things. Uh, <laughs> For sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I uh, no. But uh, you know, uh, some hidden, hidden lyrics here and there. Sure. <laughs> Those I, are as uh, a lyricist yeah. myself. Absolutely. I, yeah. Uh, I've definitely written lyrics about people and sometimes it sucks when you're not mad at those people anymore and you've processed that <laughs> anger and stuff and, and, and yeah. anger and pain and all that shit. And you just sit there and be like, I don't want to sing this anymore because they're an all right person now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've let go of that, that grudge, which for being me uh, being a Taurus is hard as shit to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. It's uh, but uh, just think about that. It was like uh, like a photo of that moment, and so it's like just recalling that moment and sure. uh, thinking that it it's no more. <laughs> Ab absolutely, dude. Twenty seven years, eleven full length albums on our way out today. If you want to leave anybody with what Elvin King is to you, what song would you want to play? Um, uh, I would play uh, one song from the latest album because it's uh, uh, it represents the band uh, in its uh, entirety and in and it's you know relatively new, so it's uh, the Bride of Night. I would choose that. Hell yeah! Here it is, Bride of the Night. Yeah.
Welcome to the night. You think you know Night Demon? Then the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast is for you. Step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented, all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon. We're talking band history, song analysis, studio anecdotes, stories from the road. It's everything a diehard Night Demon fan could want and more. This is the only place to learn the inside scoop, the deep dive trivia, the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the Night Demon story. Need more? The sacred Night Demon crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. Since 2013, there has been a calling from the underground. From the graves of all those unholy. And they decided to make a zine to talk about all of this. Soul Grinder Zine! An independent metal zine to keep you informed on all things metal and horror from the underground. Available in both print and digital formats. They're bringing you the best interviews and reviews out there today. Not only do they do the zine, but they also do compilation CDs. Check them out at facebook.com slash soulgrinder.zine and start your subscription now. Hey everybody, let me tell you about the new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Unchained Tapes. They're an independent Pennsylvania tape label. They focus on extreme metal and punk with a killer approach to the tape scene. Visit their web store at unchainedtapes.bigcartel.com now to get your fill of tapes. And for being a Metal Forge listener, enter the code METALFORGE10 at checkout to get a 10% discount on your total purchase. That's unchainedtapes.com. BigCartel.com What's up, Metal Forge fans? This is Alan Bishop, the alchemist of Indiana's Black Forest and head distiller at Spirits of French Lick. Do you find yourself drawn to the unexplained, fascinated by the Fortean, or enchanted by the paranormal? If the things that go bump in the night resonate in your mind, then tune into my brand new podcast, If You Have Ghosts, You Have Everything. Featuring first-hand accounts, collected stories, interviews, history, and speculation related to all things not of this world. Available now on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Amazon, and more. Set back, relax, and remember, if you have ghosts, you have everything. Hey, let me tell you guys about Mercenary Press. They're an independent London label and distributor of all things metal. Mercenary Press delivers the goods from their own independent zine. Trust me, you're going to want to get in on that. To distributing various bands from all over the world, including Cramp from Spain and Sadistic Force from Texas. Visit mercenarypress.bigcartel.com to find out what all they have in stock and what you can order. And for Metal Forge listeners, enter code METALFORGE10 to receive a discount on your total purchase at mercenarypress.bigcartel.com. Check it out now. Hey, Metalheads, it's with great pleasure I get to tell you guys about a new sponsor to the Metal Forge, Ageless Art, New Albany. After 20 years of owning and operating Ageless Art in Clarksville, Indiana, Phil Garrett had a vision for a new type of tattoo studio, something that is clean and modern, sleek, refined, inviting. And he's done just that with Ageless Art in New Albany. You can find it at 2736 Charlestown Road, New Albany, Indiana, 
888-447-4750. Business hours are Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sundays are 12 to 6. All sessions are appointment only, so give them a call and go get you some new ink. Or if it's your first time, go get your first one, baby. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana is the premier 12,500 square foot music superstore that has served both Southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky metro area for over four decades. Originally founded by Marvin and Beverly Maxwell in the 70s, this gym remains a Maxwell family owned business. Mark Maxwell, along with his business partner, Whitney McNichol, continued the reputation as being the national resource for all things music. In 2022, the iconic Guitar Emporium of Louisville relocated to Maxwell's Music, creating the largest independently owned showroom in the region. The retail offerings at Maxwell's Music includes a huge selection of guitars, basses, amplifiers, effects pedals, modeling amps, keyboards, drums, banjos, mandolins, ukuleles, sound systems, stage lighting equipment, and accessories. The music education program at Maxwell's is second to none. From private instrument and voice lessons to DJ, EDM, recording, songwriting, and music theory, to rock school, weekend warriors, and Maxwell's Music Lab, there is something for every age and every ability level. Down in repair land, guitar and instrument repairs and refurbishment are taken care of by the Maxwell's team of expert guitar technicians and luthiers. They also do appraisals of instruments as well. Maxwell's offers installations for professional audio, visual, and lighting systems for schools, churches, clubs, VFWs, funeral homes, sports fields, and so much more. There's also rentable space at Maxwell's, from the music practice and rehearsal rooms for the individuals and bands, all the way to a meeting space and concert venue that seats up to 120. That also includes a professional audio, visual, and lighting system and a sound booth. Maxwell's has it all. All this plus original functioning 1947 recording booth to make your own record. Go to the Guitar Hero Throne, to the very own Elvis statue, and don't forget the Harmony Green Pocket Park. There's a reason the Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana has been recognized by the National Association of Music Merchants as a number one award-winning best store design, as well as top 100 music store year after year. You gotta see it to believe it. Maxwell's House of Music in Jeffersonville, Indiana. (laughs) 